Star Wars basically invented merchandising. Before Star Wars, merchandise did come out to promote films and TV shows and stuff, but never before had it really been done to the scale that Star Wars established. And when it came to the end of the 1990s, George Lucas applied what he'd learned to drip feed the fact that a new Star Wars film was on the way. I don't think a film before or since has had so many games and software products released just for the purposes of promotion. So let's take a look at the magic, the mystery and the monstrosity of the PC multimedia flotilla for Star Wars Episode 1. This gives me the perfect opportunity to finally unbox and use my Jar Jar Binks PS2 mouse. Ah, oh, listen to that. He can finally breathe. And as all of these products were released in the 1990s, the Windows 98 Beige Box PC is coming out again. I have missed playing games on this, man. This video is going to focus on the raft of products which were released the same year The Phantom Menace came out, but Lucas got that hype train running years earlier. And so we're going to start by looking at a promotional disc released with Pepsi sometime in 1998. And really, this is not just promoting Star Wars Episode 1, but it's actually also promoting two upcoming software products. And we'll get to both of those in good time, but this was the first step on our journey. Next, in late October 1998, we had Star Wars Behind the Magic. Now, this isn't a game, this is an encyclopedia. People of a certain age will probably be well aware of the CD-ROM multimedia format and just how crazy everybody was for this in the 1990s. Products like Encarta, Home Cooking with Julia Child, the Eyewitness Encyclopedias, these things were everywhere. It was madness. This is a really good encyclopedia. It's a two disc encyclopedia on basically everything in Star Wars up to that point. It's got some behind the scenes stuff from the original trilogy. It's got sound clips. It's got videos. It's even got some stuff from the EU, which is awesome. There's stuff in here from Shadows of the Empire. Dash Rendar's in here. And what makes this relevant to this video is that it also has an episode one preview built into the game. This is almost identical to what was available on that Pepsi disc. It's behind the scenes photos, sound bites, and all that kind of stuff. What's interesting to me here though is Qui-Gon Jinn doesn't even have a name yet and the title of the film hasn't even been released. One of my favorite bits of this though is the 3D Naboo Starfighter. I think that's really cool. And that Naboo Starfighter link lets me segue very neatly into December, Christmas 1998, Rogue Squadron comes out on the N64 and the PC. This isn't an episode one game in the slightest, but Lucas was sneaky enough to get Factor 5 to include a Naboo Starfighter in the game. Rogue Squadron was released nearly a full year ahead of The Phantom Menace, but it included a secret hidden cheat code to unlock the Naboo Starfighter. For the PC version, this was actually added as a download, so you had to download a patch from the old LucasArts website. If you buy this game on Steam and GOG though, that patch is actually included as standard, so that's also pretty cool. Technically, you could say that this doesn't count as a Star Wars Episode 1 tie-in game, but if you did say that, then I don't think you like having fun. The first proper Episode 1 tie-in is in fact the official tie-in game for The Phantom Menace. This was released in May 1999, so a couple of months ahead of the film. I remember the books and the comics also coming out ahead of the film. I actually specifically remember going to WH Smith's and reading the Star Wars trade paperback off the stand and completely ruining the story for myself way ahead of seeing the film. That aside, it's a pretty good 3D action game. It's got a bit of a weird camera angle and it's certainly got some weird controls for 1999 especially. It's kind of a mouse and keyboard game, but there's no strafing. The voice cast are okay. The Obi-Wan definitely sounds like Ewan McGregor, but the guy voice in Qui-Gon sounds a lot like Patrick Stewart. When the Trade Federation Viceroy arrives, we must convince him to leave the system. As this is a full tie-in to the film, there's way too much here for me to show. I can only really show a fraction of it in this video, but this is one I will definitely make a longer video about. I mean, late 90s CD-ROM era 3D games? Come on, that's my brand. 
Next up, also released in May 1999, we have Star Wars The Gungan Frontier. Now, this was the second title from the new Lucas Learning label. Lucas Learning had previously released Droid Works in 1998, and The Gungan Frontier was their follow-up to that game. The idea behind it is the Gungans are trying to colonize a nearby moon, and it is your job to help create a stable environment for them before they move in. There's shades of SimCity, but also other early management sims you've got to get your plants, herbivores and carnivores all in check. If you've got too much of one then the system starts to fall apart. It reminds me a little bit of that rabbits and foxes game that we used to play at school. The aim is to harvest what you're growing so you also need to factor in the fact that the greedy Gungans who will apparently eat anything and so you need to help keep them in check too. It's got seriously chill music and it's way deeper than it looks. This is, this is a really fun game. On June 4th, 1999, one month ahead of the film, Star Wars Episode One Racer was released for PC and N64. This has got to be the most famous game released as part of the Episode One flotilla, and for good reason. It's Especially on the PC. You could so easily have been a snobby PC Master Race brat back in 1999, running this in 1280 by 1024 with a bunch of graphics options, running in a full 60 FPS, supporting not just keyboard and mouse, which I found really hard by the way, but glorious joystick support. So the cyborg can come out and play as well. Just incredible. There's nothing I can say about this game that just hasn't been said already, but pod racing is just such an iconic part of Star Wars. You know, it's that bah! moment in the trailer. Wow, just one of the absolute highlights of the entire film. And LucasArts got it absolutely right by zeroing in on this one aspect and making a game out of it. Imagine playing this in the run up to episode one and then just being so gassed to see it realized on the big screen, recognizing all those turns in the Boon to Eve classic because they've played that level in the game. The nostalgia is so strong here. At the end of June 1999, LucasArts also released the Star Wars Episode One Insider's Guide. This is a software tool very similar to Star Wars Behind the Magic, but this one is tailored specifically for Episode One. This was released three weeks before the film, so it definitely would have got you pumped. The manual says the Star Wars Episode One Insider's Guide explores the newest entry of the Star Wars saga in detail. From descriptions of mysterious characters like Jedi Master Plo Koon to behind the scenes secrets and little known facts about the making of The Phantom Menace. The Insider's Guide will provide fans with everything they need to know about the evolving Star Wars universe until the release of Episode Two. And that sh is my jam. All of the names that can be learned, all of the locations and the guns and the aliens, and this is no different. It's clearly designed that you would be playing this after you'd seen the film. Oh yeah, there's some serious spoilers in this. Oh, look at my boy Jakey. Oh, we did him dirty, gang, come on. And my boy Ahmed. There's another one as well, these two heroes. Star Wars Episode 1 Insider's Guide has got everything. It's got videos, it's got sound clips. It's working! It's working! It's so in-depth that I couldn't get 1% into a video like this. There's a, a whole section of behind the scenes making of footage well ahead of DVD extras. It even has the entire script of the film with little images and tool tips scene by scene. This isn't just a cheap promotional tool. This is a really well designed software product. I really like this. And with six products in the bag, The Phantom Menace is finally released in cinemas on the 16th of July, 1999 followed shortly by Yoda's Challenge Activity Center in August of 1999. I managed to pick this up sealed on eBay, so I'm also including a nice unboxing for you all. <laughs> this is another sweet product from Lucas Learning. This is actually set after the events of the film. Queen Amidala and Jar Jar are trying to put everything back together on Naboo after the big battle. So little kiddies are tasked with activities which all have some basic learning in them. Choosing the right route 
route to help the princess win a race, putting the words in the right order to help to program C-3PO, helping to unscramble the Queen's computer by putting all these shapes back in the right order. It's all very sweet stuff. This is obviously one for the younglings, but this is LucasArts demonstrating the range of Star Wars fans, and I think that's really neat. And then finally, in September of 1999, Star Wars Pit Droids was released, another product by Lucas Learning, but this time a little bit more grown up. This one is obviously designed for slightly bigger kids. I don't actually own this box because I missed out on a bit of a bargain on eBay, but not to worry, life uh, finds a way. Pit Droids is essentially Star Wars Lemmings. The story is that Watto got a bargain on a big job lot of Pit Droids and he needs your help to get them all the way across Tatooine to eventually get them to the pod racing arena. Each level is a series of pathfinding puzzles. There's logic gates, some of them are rhythm based. It's really clever how they think of so many different levels for this and it's loads of fun. Probably the most genuinely fun game actually in this video. I had a really good time. I'm playing on easy just to capture some footage but I got stuck quite a few times there's some real head scratches in it I could see this working now as a mobile game or like a casual puzzle game and it's a bit of a shame that this isn't available on digital platforms the Phantom Menace was of course released on home video the following year, April 2000 to be exact, and there is a whole bunch of software that was still released around that time, no doubt to help promote the video release of The Phantom Menace. As I said, this video is always going to concentrate on the products released in 1999 around the cinema release, but just for the sake of completion, the following games definitely count, they just weren't ever my intention to put them into the video. Lucas Learning released another four pieces of software in 2000, Anakin Speedway, Early Learning Activity Center, Jabba's Game Galaxy, and Jar Jar's Journey. Each one of these titles is focusing on a different area of learning. Jabba's Game Galaxy focuses on math, Jar Jar's Journey is about reading comprehension. These are all good. And then the last PC game which was promoting The Phantom Menace was Battle for Naboo, released in December of 2000, again on N64 and PC. It's a decent enough game, it's relatively passable, it covers the events of The Phantom Menace, it uses the engine and gameplay of Rogue Squadron. It is another Factor 5 game, but this is more of a licensed shovelware, so it's a game that is often overlooked when people talk about Factor 5. As I said, I was only ever going to talk about PC stuff in this video, but there's also a bunch of console games to consider. Episode 1 Mania was real, and it kept on giving. LucasArts really helped to bridge the gap between The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones. If there was a point to this video, it would be... Blimey! Look at all those games. <laughs> I think it's interesting as a time machine to, to look back and appreciate that in the 1990s, having a big media raft was such an important part of releasing a film. And Star Wars basically invented it. And by the time it came around to the prequel trilogy, it was now like Star Wars squared. And what's interesting to me is to compare this to maybe the last five or 10 years of Star Wars stuff, and there's been almost nothing by comparison. There's been no games to speak of. There's been no edutainment, no software. There hasn't even been that many toys. Now compare that to the Lucas era. Objectively, sure, not one is necessarily good or bad. They're just different. But if I wanted to be subjective, I would say, well, yeah, this is bad because that old stuff is wicked. It would be great if I could have a mouse shaped like Ray's Star Wars or a sellotape dispenser shaped like BB-8. Oh, wait, no, they might actually exist. I, I should look that up. Thanks very much for watching. If you like Star Wars or old PC games, then check any of my previous uploads because when those two things cross over, I am a very happy boy. If you're new to the channel, then by all means do the subscribe thing. We've got a Discord going, so jump on in. It'd be great to have you. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Ta-da!